All right, the next step is the base. Um, this is your sixth 24 inch, 24 inch piece of plywood that you cut. All I did was um, wrap it with two inch wide strips of half inch plywood, um, glued, glued it all together, made it nice and solid. So that makes a nice uh, rigid box um, that then I can you know, clamp down on my table when I need to. Um, on the front edge where the uh, fence is going to attach, I went ahead and put in a one inch by two inch strip of oak, um, glued that in there to make it more rigid. And then on the front, um, this is a 24 inch by four inch piece of plywood. Um, basically, you leave one inch overhang on one side, three inch overhang on the other. It's pretty simple. Um, what we're going to do now, take this, we've got our cross slide, and we're just going to put it on here. We're going to take off our top two sections, get those out of our way, and then we're just going to screw this down onto our base. We want to make sure it's flush with the front. You just need to knock off any splinters that are going to cause drag with some sandpaper. Take our top two sections and slide them back on. We're ready for the next step. Okay, now it's time for the uh, pivoting fence. Um, I made it smaller than the old one. Um, I knew that a lot of the problems I had with rigidity was that, that the fence was too high. So this one, um, the dimensions are 24 inches by 12 inches. Um, then to make it more rigid, I put some plywood ribs on the back. And the other thing I did was um, on the old one, I only had uh, a three quarter inch piece of wood attached to a quarter, a half inch of MDF for the fence. And that was giving me a lot of flex. So this time I uh, stuck a chunk of two inch white oak in here to reinforce it. So um, that should take away a lot of the flex that I had. And all I'm gonna do is I've got a five inch carriage bolt um, that I'm gonna run it through. And it just goes um, down here on this bottom edge over here. Hope you can see this. I've actually reinforced the one inch overlap that we had on the end with another inch of oak. Um, so that should give us a nice bearing surface. I'm just going to run the carriage bolt in from the back. Through here. fence through and bolt everything on. I'm going to use lots of washers on the back to give it some smooth operation. Um, got a lock nut for the back. And I figure once that's all tightened down that should give us plenty more rigidity. It's one of the main things I'm after. Okay, the next step is uh, cutting the groove that uh, the slot that your bowl is going to fit through to tighten down this side. We've got our pivot in the other side. So all I'm going to do is take my pencil, stick it through my hole, um, and don't mind the second hole. I first time I did it, I drilled it in the wrong place. And I'm just going to sit it here. I'm going to start off a little bit lower than the lowest I'm going to go. And then I'm just going to pivot my fence 
and that's going to tell me the arc that is the center of the slot where my bolt is going to go. I use a 3 8 inch bolt. I just have to mark a line 3 8 inch, I mean 3 16 of an inch on either side of this line and cut a slot and that will allow me to raise and lower the fence to raise and lower the height of the router. Now to mark my two sides of my arc, I'm just going to center it on the two inch and I'm going to go three sixteenths of an inch on either side all the way down. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to cut it out with a jigsaw and that's not exactly a surgical tool. So with the washer on the back of my bolt, I'm not going to have any trouble if this is a little bit too wide as long as the bolt fits through. Then you just connect the hash marks that I made. That gives me a line to cut to and you can either cut it out or you could drill it out with a series of drill holes whatever you need to do I'm going to drill a hole on either end and then cut in between the lines with my jigsaw Okay, I've got everything fastened down. I've got my bolts tight, and um, there's the whole thing is moving as one unit when I jiggle it. All the wiggle is being transferred all the way down to my workbench. So I'm very happy with with that. It's much more rigid than the old one. Um, that's what I was after. That's what I wanted. And uh, looks like we've got it. Now all that's left is work, working out um, how to adjust the height, the fine, fine adjustment for the height. I'm going to use some threaded rod, probably run it right down through here, twist it, raise and lower it. I have to countersink for, to attach the uh, router base and work out if I want to change the uh, stops for so I can use stop blocks to control the size of my mortises and then install the T-Track and then we're done.